Hello everyone, we're very glad to uh, see you tonight and we're very glad to greet you uh, on our fourth webinar from the uh, Finance English webinar series on Finance and Business English. And today we have a great topic and uh, the topic is about money. So the whole course actually is about money, but today we're going to speak about the language of banking, about loans and credits, which is a pain of so many people. So, and I would like to introduce you our uh, wonderful uh, Dr. Charles Hall, who is going to speak about all of this specific vocabulary and all of these extremely interesting things. Hello, Charles. Good evening. Thank you, Sophie. How are you? Fine. Thank you very much. I'm in no. I'm, I'm uh, during the dark, cold November evening, and actually, I'm very glad because what else to do? So study. That's true. Exactly. I, you know, I'm in Saudi Arabia where it's really cold. It must be 18 degrees. <laughs> oh, you are killing us because now it's minus five in St. Petersburg and we have snow. We have snow. Oh, no, we don't have snow here. No, no. It might rain this week. Who knows? We have rain days, actually. But actually, I'm in Saudi Arabia where everyone is extremely happy because the Saudis won their match against Argentina in the World Cup. Yes, 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 yes. And I think the whole country is just uh, in a fantastic mood. We we got two days off from school to celebrate. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the whole country. <laughs> well, I bet. Well, Argentina. And why can they do that? Because they have all the money. Oh, yes. <laughs> And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about about more mainly personal banking. Next, in two weeks, we'll talk more about corporate and international banking. But tonight, we're going to talk uh, sort of focus on the individual and how individuals interact. Are you ready for me to show? Uh, okay. Yes. Good, yes, we have it. Right. So. And of course, we know, as if you've been with us before, as Sophie's going to explain, you can join us for our polling at vvox.app. Sophie, you want to tell them how to do it? Yes. Uh, actually, you need to go to uh, vvox.com. So www.vvox.com. And then you will see there will be uh, a special place. You insert this ID number. And then uh, uh, you will be able to join the presentation that Charles has. And during the presentation, uh, you will see that there will be some questions. And you will be able to vote. And what is great about this voting that it's anonymous voting so we don't know who and how votes it's very very convenient you can vote both from the computer and from your phones i will be also voting and i will put the number i have sent this number to our telegram channel and i also will put it right now uh, in youtube in comments so when the slide changes uh, you will be still able to see it but you can also see it all the time during the voting in the top right corner so the number is still there Okay, so, you know, um, many, many years ago, when the police captured a very famous bank robber, they asked him a very silly question. They said, why do you rob banks? And his obvious, very intelligent answer was, that's where the money is. And that's exactly it. That's why we're all, we all have a love-hate relationship with banks. We need banks to keep our money, but sometimes they drive us crazy. Well, of course, before I begin, I want to thank two really wonderful people, actually three tonight. I want to thank Jennifer Uller, who is in, in, in Tallinn, where she is the regional English language officer for, the, uh, for Russia and several other countries. And especially, I want to thank her on this happy Thanksgiving day tomorrow, one of the major holidays in the United States. We're very thankful for many things. And of course, how could I not thank Sophia, who is doing all the moderating and I've learned so much from her in these three, in the past three episodes. And I also want to thank our wonderful technician, Roman. I have to say Roman, I can't quite say it in Russian. No. Uh, how do you say it in Russian, Raman? No, it's Raman. Raman, ah, yes. Raman. Yes. Okay, thank, thank Raman for making this really, really wonderful. Well, let's go to our first, let's go to our, our first, our first, uh-oh, it didn't work. Hold on just a moment, please. This should be our first 
don't tell me it's not going to be working tonight. Just a moment, please. We seem to be having a bit of trouble with v VVox. Started. Okay. That's okay. Done. All right. It should work. Yes, that should do it. Okay, now let's try again. Mm -hmm. I was having trouble with VVox earlier today. And nope, it's not working, Sophia. Uh-oh. That's all right it's... because uh, we can we can try to maybe uh, return to it, and ah. we can always try to uh, vote maybe in our YouTube uh, comments. Well, although of course it would be coming, but let's no try. No problem. Maybe we'll see. Okay, so instead of typing in, I want you to just type into the uh, into Telegraph or anything the first word you think of when you hear the word bank. Well, I bet this is not the picture you have in bank. Uh, as you type in, Sophie will share some of the words with us that you type in. Sophie, have you gotten any words yet? Are uh, not yet, uh, but actually worry. I was able to join your presentation, so you can try oh, to do it you? again. Yes. Okay, let's see. Let's try again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe... Why not? That's weird, isn't it? Huh. So because it actually... says welcome. Welcome. Yes, it says welcome. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Anyway, the banking has a very interesting, a very interesting history. We have had banks for a couple of thousand years, but they've all had different forms. Okay, and of course, this picture represents one of the earliest types of European banks. The word bank actually comes from a Germanic word that became an Italian word that means table. If you speak modern German, bank means bench. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Italian, it became table. And you can see here, you've got two people sitting at a table with lots of coins. And one guy is keeping records and the other is. So this was the first, this was the first form of banking in Europe. People who set up tables and exchanged money or lent money. Now we could get into the religious yeah. aspects of banking, which are really pretty astonishing. Um, you know, banking has a very, very uh, wonderful reputation and a horrible reputation. And, and in actually, fact, yeah. and go ahead. Yes, oh, and then you can start, yes, uh, polling. So, yes. But we have some uh, words from our um, okay. Uh, while, participants. While they're, while they're voting, yes. okay, so, now, notice in the last picture, we saw everyone with coins. At first, there were only coins in Europe. So which country in Europe do you think was the first to issue banknotes? And literally, I never thought about the word banknotes, which means paper money, until today. Literally, notes from banks. So which country do you think issued the first banknotes? Vote here. What words did you get, Sophie? Yeah, from about sorry. when they think of banks. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was bank tellers, then papers, mm -hmm. loan, oh. problem, and money. <laughs> I think it's problems. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the bank teller. Uh, well, the bank teller is a very interesting word. The word teller comes from a old English word that means to count to retell, to tell. Uh, again, if you speak German, the related word is zahlen, to count. So a teller is literally someone who counts. It's not a person who tells you stories. That's not a teller. That's a storyteller, but a teller, someone who counts. Well, let's see, let's see what we got. We have lots of responses. Which one did we get? Closing, yes. let's see if you got it right. Sophie, what did you think? I was thinking about Italy, honestly. Oh, you know, when I, I was, before I looked it up, I had to look it up, of course, too. Before, I thought it was Italy, too. It's interesting. Most people think it's the Netherlands. And, of course, that makes perfect sense because uh, the Netherlands were very famous in banking around the world. And Italy had the first banks, but they didn't have the first paper notes. Oddly enough, the first country was Sweden. They had the first central bank, the Riksbanket, and uh, it was the first country in Europe to issue paper money. 
The Chinese had had Baker money for a long, long time. But you all were right that the Netherlands, England, and Italy were all very important in banking. So we've got bank tellers, we've got bank notes. And here's an interesting fact. 96% of Americans use a bank. In other words, only 4% don't have a bank account. Now, this picture is what this picture reminds me of my childhood. This is what banks looked like when I was a kid in the United States. This was every small town bank. There was Mrs. Brown, who was the teller. You can see that there. And then there was the cashier to the left. And you were bringing in all sorts of important things. So this is a small town bank. Well, they don't look like that anymore today. But it's not as happy a picture as we see. Indeed, 96% of Americans use a bank, but what do you think happens when we break it down into different backgrounds, ethnic groups? Do you think it will be the same? What do you think, Sophie? Do you think that all Americans will have equal access to banking? Actually, I never thought about it. No, uh, I didn't either, yeah. right. So, but uh, now that you have asked, I would assume that those people who are maybe legal immigrants, they don't have the uh, official job, so therefore they That's cannot right. get officially money and therefore they cannot open up an account with a bank because they cannot prove where the money comes from or something like this because that's exactly right you have to have a social security account which is given by the federal uh, social security social security number which is given by the federal government and if you don't have one in theory you can't open up a bank well fortunately we're going to see some ways in which people who don't have papers for the united states can open up types of banking it's still a little odd but also it breaks down by ethnic group so in 2021 in spite of covid we had the highest rate of banking ever but it wasn't equal for everybody only two percent of white households didn't have a bank account on the other hand over one in ten black households didn't have a bank account so 10% over one in 10 black families don't have bank accounts. And you think, how can you how? live without a bank account? How? Yes, absolutely. It's really difficult. Uh, there are all sorts of things, horrible things we'll talk about a little later that people without bank accounts have to do. And almost as many Latino or Latinx households didn't have. So there's clearly an ethnic disparity in who has banking ability and who doesn't. And without a bank, you can't get a mortgage. It's hard to get a car loan. There are so many things it's really difficult to do. And it's even dangerous if you have to keep cash at home. Well, our next poll, now that I mentioned the United States, what do you think, what percentage of the world uses a bank hmm. that's such an excellent question actually yeah it's it's one that you think now of course we automatically know it's going to break down into developed world and lesser developed world we know that but uh, you might be surprised yes and we would like just to remind um, those of our viewers who've just joined us that you can participate in the vote you can see on top of the page uh, the address vivox.app. You can write either vivox app or vivox.com. So, and then you have to enter the ID and then you can join and vote. So you don't have to write anywhere else because it's, it's working. So I voted, but I honestly have no idea. <laughs> you want to, you want to tell us what you voted? Well, I was positive. I was hoping just under 70%, but I think under maybe just about 50 because I don't know. So, because know. we in Russia actually have a very developed banking system. Yes, really, yes, you do. Really developed and fast, and we have so many services, and we can just kind of uh, transfer money instantly by using a phone. Yes, and I have friends who pay each other for like buying a cup of coffee and they're sitting and you just do it and i don't carry cash with me it's a problem no 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 no, no. when was the last time you were in a bank sophie oh, i think it was several months ago when i was actually receiving i was my card has expired and i received oh. a new one so only because of that 
not because of money. Oh, well, no. okay, so I was actually doing the cards for my kids. It's in it's a kind of a, a, a service. Yes, we have now. So well, it really? already exists for several years, but that's what I tried. So and yeah, wow. so, yeah. Well, I was actually surprised about the percentage of the world that uses a bank. It's actually just under 80 percent. It's about 76 to 70 percent, 77 percent of the world has a bank account now, which is phenomenal. I, I, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't looked it up. Okay. I would agree with most people. I thought like you that it would be just under 70 percent. So it's exactly so the world. So banking is much more widespread than we think it is, even in the lesser developed world. And of course, we know that if you're not part of the banking world, if you don't have Internet, that you're really left out a lot. Well, when we say bank, we actually mean many different things. Okay? There are many different types of banks. Okay? For example, in the United States, I belong to a teacher's federal credit union. Okay? And I I've been there for over 35 years. And it's not a bank. It's not a real bank. When you think of a bank, you think of bankers, people who are professionals who work there. A credit union is a group of people who either work together or are in the same profession and they charter set up, they charter, they set up a type of bank called a credit union, which is different from a regular bank but it's usually for people who don't have a lot of money. And that's certainly me. Okay. So there's credit unions. You look up at the top, you can see the German Sparkasse, which means to a, a savings bank. And they're often, uh, they're often a savings bank is often basically just to help people get a mortgage. And we're gonna come back to mortgage, of course. Down at the bottom, we have one of the most successful banks, the, the Hamburg, as we say in German, Hamburg Commercial Bank. A commercial bank is really what most people mean when they say, I'm going to the bank. But we'll come back to that. Okay. Now, uh, if you see the Arabic, that's the Saudi Investment Bank. An investment bank is a bank that's not for small people like me. They actually raise money for businesses, corporations, and they often handle, for example, the initial public offering for a new company. So they're not for humans, they're mainly for corporations and they make lots of money. And that's why investment bankers are much, 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 usually much more well off than just a banker, okay? All right, so now what kinds of accounts do we have? Uh, Sophie, you, you see Santa Claus there. It's almost Santa Claus time. Okay. Yeah. And this is a this is a nice old, old uh, bag thing that we still have, but Post I don't know. Postcards, I'd like, yeah. What? Postcards. Oh, yeah. It's a Christmas club. What's yes. a Christmas club? It's a club where, not really a club, it's just a special account where every week you put a little bit of money in a savings account so that at Christmas time, you will have money to pay for gifts. And uh, they have special rates and they often do special little things. So you think, well, that's a cute little kind, but most people know about savings accounts. Okay, unfortunately right now, because of the low interest rates around the world, you earn almost no interest on savings accounts. So savings accounts aren't really savings, they're just safeguarding. Sophie, do you have any idea what the uh, the basic interest rate is for like a savings account in Russia these days? I might be mistaken. I think our viewers can help me because yes, exactly. I, I do not have a savings account. I spend oh. everything. So, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, I think it's about 6%, probably 8 but wow. we have currently wow. had a very high, um, I forgot how to say it in English, our uh, rate of... Um, Inflation? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, so, and right. it's That's over. That's why it's actually, it doesn't make any sense to put it nope. into the, because you will just... Uh, so that's why we'll spend. 
We spend- so it's not really a savings account, it's a losing account. Yes, absolutely correct. Yes. Exactly. Same thing in the United States and in most countries. And in fact, even in Europe, they had negative interest savings account where the longer you kept money, the less money you had. And I was like, really? How bizarre. Uh, inflation, of course, is eating up everything uh, for people around the world. This is a major problem for people. Well, the most common form is called a checking account. And this is the one, this is sort of the daily account that people use. And interestingly enough, the word check comes from the game chess. And it literally means, um, how do you say in Russian, when you have killed the king, we say checkmate. We have, uh, we say shach. Shach, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And of course, or it mat. does. I don't know. I'm not a mat. chess player, so we might have, checkmate. yes. I remember that one of them is shach and one is mat. And then when it's like over, then it's uh, both. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not a, <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> absolutely into chess. Well, they all come from the same basic root, okay, literally meaning the king is dead, shachmat. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right, so checkmate. So checking means to make sure that it's good, it's valid. And uh, that's where the word check comes from. We also have individual retirement accounts, IRAs. And they used to earn more interest, but they don't earn any interest now either. Uh, United, in the United States, many people, many people don't get very good. They don't get pensions from their employment. They get, mm, they have to open up their own individual retirement accounts and save money for their own retirements. Because when you retire 62, 65, 70, whatever, the money you get from the government for social security it won't be enough for most people to live on. So you have to arrange your own individual retirement accounts. And some of these are tax free and some of them are called tax deferred. You don't pay taxes on it now, you pay taxes when you take it out years from now. And of course, banks give us credit cards. Very dangerous, right, Sophie? Oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. We'll talk more about plastic in a moment. And of course, even today, they still do Christmas clubs. So that uh, if you want to save money so that you can buy gifts for your friends and not have to use your credit cards, you can do that. Well, where do we keep the money in a bank? Well, this is not a very good bank. <laughs> What's the name for this? Ask your viewers if they can type in, what's the name for this room that's very safe in the bank? Okay. See if so, they know that name. Well, actually we have, it's called a vault. So as- A vault, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. A, a bank vault, a bank vault. And today most bank vaults are empty at most banks. Okay, because mm -hmm. they don't keep money. It's all electronic. But we still have some terms that were related to bank vaults. So for example, you crack a safe. A safe is often like a, a personal uh, bank vault. Uh, you might have one in your, in your house in which you hide your valuables. And when the burglar comes, he cracks a safe. He cracks it. To crack it means to solve. Mm -hmm. So he solves how to open the bank or this is what happens in Las Vegas. When somebody makes a lot of money on the gambling tables, we say he breaks the bank. And that's really interesting because it literally means he breaks the table. And that's where the word bankrupt comes from. It literally means in old Italian, banca rotta which means broken table. So when the banker had no more money, they would break his table and he was out of business. Oh my so goodness, these are Lord. all related. It's sort of interesting to think yeah. about. The history of banking is really, really interesting. Well, this is one of the saddest parts of the uh, history of banking. Uh, it's Christmas time. And in almost every American city, there's a movie that plays called It's a Wonderful Life. And this is James Dean. It's a very old movie, black and white, as you can see. 
Uh, I'm sorry, James Stewart. <laughs> Somebody was just listening and corrected me. Not James Dean. James Dean is two okay. generations later. James Stewart. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy Stewart, who plays very wonderful, honest people, of course. And uh, in, in it, he is a banker. And there is a run on the bank. And we've seen this in many countries, unfortunately. So a run on the bank means when everybody runs to the bank to try to get their money out because they're afraid the bank is going to go broke. Well, that was such an important thing and such a horrible thing that happened. The United States decided to do something about it. They, in 1933, after there had been many runs on the bank and the Great Depression and everything, the United States set up a Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So this is a insurance account. And what happens is it insures deposits in US banks. Okay. And it was created in 1933, as I said, and it insures deposits up to $250,000 per account member per account member. So for example, if you and your husband or wife have a joint account, it's up to 500,000. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, in 1933, when it was first created, they insured up to $5,000. So things have changed a great deal. Now, the problem is there still are banks in the United States that aren't a member of the FDIC. So do you remember the picture of the of the small town bank that we saw? You didn't notice it, but I noticed it immediately that there was a sign that said FDIC. That meant this bank was part of this insurance corporation. So if the bank ran out of money, which does happen every year to several banks, the federal government's insurance corporation will pay you back, which is pretty nice. So you don't have to worry about runs on the bank anymore in the United States. Well, what kinds of transactions do we have at a bank? What's the most common things we do? A transaction simply means going from place to place. Well, the first obviously is deposit, a deposit. And we have the other French word depot, which means a place where you deposit things, but not in a bank. It's only for trains and for mm -hmm. other things where it's physical. So a deposit to place money in a bank, of course. Okay. And deposits can be in any form. We can have, we can have uh, all sorts of different types of deposits. As I said, I'm here in Saudi Arabia and in my bank, I have two different bank accounts. I have a bank account in Saudi Rials, the local currency, but I also have a small account in American dollars and both are completely legal and I can transfer money back and forth with no problem. That's not common in the United States. Why? It would be, Why? oh, we don't, remember we, <laughs> the United States is like an island. We don't notice anything that happens outside the United States much, right? So uh, if you, in fact, if you want to exchange money say you want to go a friend of mine is going to zanzibar in two days okay and they use the tanzanian shilling there well if he wanted to get some tanzanian shillings before he went to zanzibar in the united states it would be almost impossible almost impossible we don't have foreign currency inside the united states it's really difficult to find you can't just go to your bank. Like you can go to most banks anywhere in the world outside the United States and you can change money, but not in the United States. We only basically have American dollars. Some banks on the border with Canada and on the border with Mexico might do some foreign exchange, but very, very few. So you wouldn't have two types of accounts in an American bank. You'd only have American dollars. Can you have uh, different currency accounts in Russia? Yes, you can. Yeah. No problem, right? 
Well, right now we do have some issues because of that, oh, well, yeah. because of the political situation. But previously, mm -hmm. you could have usually it was dollars and euros, so yes, that was right. the dollars most and euros, frequent. Right. Yes, and you can keep your currency, and a lot of people were those who were saving money. They were trying to save it in different currency because of uh, different rates. So they were quite smart in this because you never know what oh, might happen. Exactly. So that was like a strategy. Um, so, and we also actually have, uh, we have comments from um, our viewers that oh, speaking good. about ensuring uh, the deposits, we have the same um, kind of uh, mechanism in Russia, but it's the government that ensures if, the, if there is run on the bank, uh, but you can get uh, maximum 100, 1 million 400,000 rubles, which is equivalent right now about 23 and a half thousand dollars. Twenty three and a half thousand dollars. So, yes. So you could uh, you could in theory, you could lose a lot of money if you had uh, much yeah. more money than that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And and that's one of the issues. That's why it's gone up to two hundred fifty thousand in the United States. When I was a kid, I seem to remember it was like ten or fifteen thousand which sounded like a lot of money then, but yeah. of course today it wouldn't be that, it w it's still more money than I'd like to lose, of course, but it wouldn't be that much, but 250. And most places do have some kind of insurance. It's really important. Well, if you don't want to put money in, you can withdraw it. Or as we say informally, take out money. I'm gonna go take out some money from the bank. I'm gonna go take out some money from the bank. Now, we use that when we're talking about the physical bank. Of course, almost no one goes to the bank anymore to get money. They go to the ATM machine, and we'll come back to that in a little bit, okay? So withdrawal. A withdrawal is simply taking money out. Now, here's a word that has a very interesting history. Endorse, it means two things. It means two things. So for example, if I were going to suggest to anyone, if somebody wanted to know where in St. Petersburg would you go to learn about legal English, I would of course endorse Sophie's Legal English Center. It's so like a referral it. or a commendation, yes? A referral That's right, or a recommendation. A recommendation. Mm -hmm. But it literally comes from on the back like dorsal, maybe you know the word dorsal fin or dorsum, which means back in Latin. And when you have a check, a physical check, you turn it over and you sign your name on the back, the dorsum. So that's literally to endorse a check. It doesn't mean you recommend a check. It means that you, you, you tell the bank, I want to deposit this check. Well, of course, we don't do that much more anymore today. But oddly enough, if you did get a physical check, now you can deposit it online. Most major banks have an app that allows you to take a picture of the check and that will count as a deposit. Or QR which, code or something like this, yes. That's right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I haven't had, I think I have had in the last eight years, I've had two physical checks and so i had to actually download an app just to just to uh deposit those two checks in the united states but i thought it was very amazing that i could i could down i could deposit a check electronically a physical check so endorse to write your name on the back okay and of course you can transfer transfer back and forth transfer now in the United States, again, it wasn't that easy until very recently to transfer money. We caught up finally with much of the world, but we still have a long way to go to catch up with most of the world to actually just easily transfer money. Okay. Well, there's a brave new banking world, and you've mentioned it already, and that has to do with electronic funds transfer, EFT. This is what has now replaced so much of checks and and all sorts of currency and everything so it's electronic funds transfer and there are basically two ways to do it there's the very now old-fashioned way a wire transfer 
as you'll learn next week or in two weeks, I'm sorry, as you'll learn in two weeks, the United States is not part of the IBAN system. You guys use IBAN, of course, in Russia. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we, we do. don't. Yes, but I have and no idea don't. that you are not really. No, nope, we're not. But we're I'm not. not a specialist in this. Oh, my good. Okay. No, of course not. I mean, why would you? I found out the hard way. When I, when, when I came here nine years ago to Saudi Arabia and I opened up my bank account and they said, um, because you're an American, there will be a special process to transfer money. My European colleagues, all they have to do is push a cu couple of buttons and their money is instantly transferred via IBAN to Europe. But we as Americans have to get a now old fashioned wire transfer. So they literally have to physically enter the amount into the computer and then it gets transferred and it takes two or three days. It's not immediate, not immediate. But we'll talk more about that next week when we talk about international banking. Well, much faster than the wire transfer is the automated clearinghouse. But this is inside the United States, inside the United States. A clearing house used to be when everybody used physical checks. I don't know if you remember. I don't know how you did this in Russia, but I remember when I was younger, um, you physically got your checks back every month. Your bank would send you the checks that you wrote and they would be full of they'd be full of stamps. So if you had written a check to somebody in another state, it was mailed to the other state, it was stamped, it went through a whole bunch of clearing houses. Then we started getting pictures. And now finally, we just get a statement. So a clearing house is where people changed checks and kept balances of where. But today it's automated. And how is that automated? Well, one of the best things about automated clearinghouse is direct deposit. Now, here's a question I have for you and your viewers. How do you guys get paid? Do you get paid by physical check? Does it go directly in your yeah. bank account? It goes directly in our bank account. And actually in Russia, I might be mistaken, but we never had checks. Like, no. You never had paychecks? No, we never had paychecks. And actually, the first time I ever uh, got paycheck when I was very young. And at age, uh, age of uh, 20, I worked as a camp counselor in the state of Iowa. And I was amazed <laughs> because uh, during the summertime, you know, they work and travel and I get my paper and I had no idea what to do with it. So Absolutely. because, yeah, so I had to ask someone to go and cash it for me. And I remember that I was very outraged that the bank charged some small commission for it. It's like my money. Yes. So it's not fair. And so no. all time when we really had like before, um, the, when it was for Soviet Union, people usually went to the cash desk at work uh -huh. and they would receive cash actually they would stand in line of course with the banking system we start getting it directly into our bank accounts but we never had uh, uh we never had checks. paychecks nope never that's so interesting because uh, of course we had uh when i when i was very young uh, about 15 or 16 and i was working in the local grocery store just like you I would get paid in cash every Friday night. Mr. Erickson would count out the money to me and I would be so happy. And then I'd spend it on Saturday, of course. Immediately. Um, mm -hmm. Immediately, right. Even today, I work in the Czech Republic every summer. Uh, I train people in how to teach English. And as a foreigner in the Czech Republic who doesn't live there, I can't open up a bank account. So just like you mentioned, all of us who are foreigners go to the cash, deck at the cash desk at the university and our dear friend counts out cash to us every summer. And it makes us feel so like, like, like it's, it's 100 years ago to actually get cash instead of, a, instead of having it deposited directly. But you're right, in most of the world, in the developed world, people get direct deposits. Now, who do you think in the United States doesn't want direct deposits? Well, first of all, remember we have we have that four percent who don't have bank accounts. 
so um, they can't get direct yeah. deposits. I will say but also the businesses who are trying to uh, evade or avoid paying uh, taxes because if it goes through the bank, it's all very clear to the tax authorities. And of course, if you want to hide the money, you try to give it below the counter. Ah, good guess. Almost right. I think you just translated something. It's not below the counter uh, in English. It's I don't know. You were so close. You were so secret. close. Over the counter. So or something. Oh no, over the no. counter. That refers to It's about to the recipe medicine, yes. <laughs> I like I never thought of that. <laughs> if you if you say it's under the counter, that almost has a sense of it's illegal, you know. Maybe we keep those things under the counter. Yeah. Okay. Uh nine years ago when I first came to Saudi Arabia. The uh, Pakistani artisans would keep the Christmas decorations under the counter because oh. they were illegal nine years ago for Christmas decorations. Now, the phrase for making it not quite legal in English is under the table. Again, the table. The ta back to the table, the banca, exactly. And so, for example, um, I, oh, I'm not allowed to say that. If I were going to have someone here in Saudi Arabia that I hired to work for me, and uh, I would pay him or her under the table, and I would give them cash. But it doesn't matter because there's no, there are no income taxes here. There are no taxes here. So I'm it doesn't serious. matter. But in the United States, it really does. It really does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And I'm sure in Russia, it's the same. If you pay somebody in cash, they're probably not going to pay taxes on it. Okay. So you're absolutely right. The other group, the very strange group, are old people. Many old people mm -hmm. still don't trust banks. And they want a check. And every month, they get a check in the mail and they take it to the bank. And of course, we've worked really hard to convince them that that's not a good idea. Not a good idea, not a good idea, okay? That is so much easier just to have direct deposit, but that's changed the world completely, okay? Now, what are some other transactions? Oh, well, we have two words that we use over. And oddly enough, one is positive and the other is negative. And they all, they both begin with over, dr, dr. <laughs> Overdrawn means you took too much money out of your bank account. You wrote too many checks. You have a negative balance. Now you think, how can you have a negative balance in a checking account? Well, if you're a good customer, your bank will cover a bad check now and then. That's called overdraft. So if you accidentally write a check and you're maybe $10 short, the bank will cover it and cash the check for you, but they'll probably charge you a whole lot of money for doing that and then get it back the next month. Oh, yeah. So we have overdrawn, which means you have no money overdraft protection, which means the bank will cash the check, but then charge you money. Now you think, why would, why do you care? Why do you care if they cash the check? Because if they send the check back, the person who you gave the check to can charge you a bunch of money for returned check, it's called a returned mm -hmm. check. So it's very nice of the bank, even though they make money, to protect you from yourself. Well, we missed something. Oh, here we go. Okay. When we're overdrawn, now I wonder if this is the same in Russian. In some languages, it's exactly the opposite. So to Sophie, if you are making a profit in Russian, are you in the black or in the red? We are in the plus. In the plus. Oh, we are not in plus? the color. Yes, we're not. You're in not the color. in the color at all. <laughs> no, we are. We are in plus and in minus. 
<laughs> and that's why we always try to kind of say this in English, and I have to explain it during our classes that <laughs> foreigners will not understand. You need to say the colors. Yes. That's right. That's right. I'm in the plus. You could say I'm in the plus column, but it would sound very awkward. No, no. Uh, I'm in the minus column. No, no, no. You're right. So in the black means you've you're safe. You've made a profit. And in the red, then means you've lost money. You don't have enough. That's the minus column for That's you. That's the minus, yes. <laughs> I like that. No colors for you. Okay. And notice I've done this here. I've got overdrawn in red and overdraft in black, just to remind us of that. Well, now, how do you read a check? This is... And that's very new to us because we have no idea how to read checks because we just don't have them. So, and the, uh, like 99 and a half percent of Russians have never seen a check in their life. So never be, seen a check. No, no, we don't have them actually. So never. How did you transfer money before electronics? Oh, we were cool Russians. We carried them in big bunches. And there's these famous stories about uh, Russian business people who would come with a are with a big box of <laughs> money <laughs> and we were carrying them and actually in like our suitcases literally yes. so that's that's uh -huh. very very true story so oh that's wonderful uh you know it, so we used to say oh he arrived with suitcases full of cash and you instantly it. think criminal <laughs> yes and actually it was for everyone not only criminal no yes. no no it was for everybody right well, you know, that's that's the whole idea of the cash economy. Even today in Germany, for example, still people, some people really like to use cash. I just spent two weeks in the United States and I did not use cash once in two weeks, not once. No matter what it was, I paid either with a payment app or a credit card and I don't write any checks. That's why it's funny that we're, we're, we're showing you now how to read a check because most Americans don't use checks anymore either. When I was growing up, everyone used checks. Now, what was the problem with the check? It was easy to overdraw. Ah, to overdraw. That's right, <laughs> it, to overdraw, right, exactly. And we'll have a we're going to have a question. We're going to have a quiz about what you call that. Well, here's a here's a very traditional check. This is exactly how every check looks in the United States. It has to have your name at the top. Nobody would accept a sort of a blank check, as it's called. Pay to the order of who gets the money. And then notice we have two numbers. We have the dollar sign, and there's a little white thing where we put in the numbers. But most importantly, you have to write out what you did. So let's say if I just said $10, I would write one zero point point, not comma, point zero zero. Then here I would write 10 and no dollars. Okay. The one that is actually legal is the words. The words are more legal than the numbers. Now, what's at the bottom here? Well, we have three different numbers, as you can see. We have the routing number, and this is actually the number of the bank. This is very similar, but not the same, as the IBAN in most of the world. So this tells everybody in the banking world exactly which bank this check is from. Then next, you have your own account number. And then finally, and again, this is only for checks, you actually have the check number. Look at the top of the check and you'll see one, two, three. And here down at the bottom in blue, you'll see one, two, three. Okay. And the routing number, each bank has a different routing number. And when you want to do, for example, the direct deposit, what we used to have to do, and many people are still doing it, is you would have to take a physical check, you would write void across it, void, not good, and you would send it to the person who was going to give you a direct deposit. 
That way they could find the routing number, your account number, and they just ignored this. The reason is most people are really bad about writing numbers. And unfortunately, this is my sister would kill me if she if she knew I was going to tell this story. My sister was sending money to somebody about two years ago. It was about three thousand dollars and it was for uh, I've forgotten what it was for, but it was about three thousand dollars. She transposed two numbers in the account number. And so instead of it means mixed. Yes. Or, mixed. Mm -hmm. So in other words, instead of writing seven, nine, she wrote nine, seven. Yes, the money went into someone else's account. And we even know whose account it was in. And he would not give the money back. Is it allowed? Yes, yes. There are certain rules. Mm -hmm. There are certain rules. Okay. But basically, because it was under a certain amount of money and it was not the bank's fault, if the bank had made the mistake, we would have gotten the money back. But who made the mistake? Yes, My sister, sister, who is not here. <laughs> She'd be really angry at me for telling that story. So we never got the $3,000 back. We were happy it was, quote unquote, only $3,000. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, that's the problem is when you're using numbers, many people are really bad about writing numbers. And exactly the word I use, transpose, which means to basically just switch mm -hmm. instead of seven, nine, nine, seven. And this happens all the time. Okay. Now these checks are, are electronically read. You can see this is the bottom. And as I told you, now there are apps in which you could take a picture of this entire check and it would be deposited automatically into your account. Okay. Well, so that's your account number and the check number. Now, here is an interesting international issue. This is something we talk about in usually in technical writing. Here is the here is the end of a check and there's the date. It says 7-6-2017. You guys have to tell me what does it represent? Is it 7 June or 6 July? You're making it hard for us, okay? <laughs> okay. And while we're waiting for the voting, because we have about like 10 seconds uh, delay uh, because of the... Uh -huh, um, of course. We, we go to... Uh, we have some comment from uh, one of our uh, viewers that is speaking about this are suitcases of cash so it was not uh, only this um, um, not only one option but in the ussr of course people uh, didn't keep only money in in the suitcases uh, they would keep in the uh, our savings bank we had one state savings ah, bank you did have so some, of okay, course yes, yes yes we had banks yes but if you needed just especially in 1990s of course there were like numerous yes. banks and if you needed to so you could either transfer money but sometimes it was uh, people were feeling safe to, to carry cash with them. Exactly. So, so in, in, in Russia or the Soviet Union, where, do, where did do people hide their money at home? Under a mattress. Of course. <laughs> or in between the books <laughs> or in some pipes. So, or exactly. actually they would hide it in a bunker. So a lot of people actually would keep it in a jar, which, which is called banka. Well, banka is like a, like a jar with a lid. Yes, we call it banka. <laughs> oh, we call that the cookie jar. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. So yes, you're right. In fact, my grandmother actually did keep money in the cookie jar, mm -hmm. but everybody knew there, was, but it wasn't much money. It was sort of like petty cash. Yeah. Do you same. know the term petty cash? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So she would keep her and a human. I mean, normal people don't have petty cash. Only businesses have petty cash. But she would keep her her, uh, you know, a few dollars here, a few dollars there. I keep money by my door under a statue to pay 
as tips for the people who deliver my food and my groceries and everything else. Oh, that's a good but it's idea. literally just a, you know, just a few dollars or a few SAR actually. Okay, so let's see, what, what do you think? What did people say, 7 June or 6 July? Which one? Which one do you think it is, Sophie? Well, if it's an American, of course, then it will be the 6th of July. And we have a lot of people write that it's yes, you guys the 6th got of it July. Right. But if it's Europe, then it's the 7th of June, as right. we have. Mm -hmm. Now, this actually matters, oddly enough, because uh, I, I have a friend who got a check from someone in Europe and he couldn't cash it yet because it was one of those where they written it with just numbers and it wasn't the right month exactly so it was so for example you know it could have been um like 6 12 okay and uh, no no 12 6 12 6 and that would have been december 6th instead of the 12th of june so when he got this check for a lot of money he literally had to wait till December to cash the check because the number matters. And in the United States, it has to be date, then no, month, month. then date. <laughs> okay. I can't even get it right. <laughs> Basically, what I always tell people is don't use numbers, write it out. Put 7 June 2017. Oh, that's an old check. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Most of but most everybody got it right. Okay. Hey. Wait. <laughs> I think it's Vivox who is confusing us because it's European, yes, not wait, American. Yes. Wait. 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 July. Yes. Yeah, Seven June. No. 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 That's the wrong answer. Vivox is confused. Even yes. Vivox got it wrong. Silly Vivox. Okay. Well. This is what we used to have to do. And again, if you guys have never had checks, you've never had to do this. My mother, who is a wonderful woman, she could never balance her checkbook. You can see what you actually had to do. You would write down the number of the check. You would write who it was to. You would write how much the check was for. And then you would subtract it from how much money you thought you had in the bank. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I can assure you at least once every two months, my mother would get a special letter in the mail. And it was we always knew what it was because it was one of those letters with, a, you know, where you can see through, you can see the letter in it. And it was pink. Mm. It was pink. Pink is bad. And that, that's pink is bad. It meant, uh oh. Mother has written a check that she didn't have enough money for. And she would say, don't tell your father. Don't tell your father every time. Because every time you did that, the bank would charge you 15 or $20. And the person you wrote the check to would charge you 15 or $20. So if you wrote a check for $5, it could end up costing you almost $50. Okay. Now, of course, today, we can look online immediately and we can find our bank account. We can do this instantly. This is what we would get originally. Today, banks actually encourage people to get online bank accounts because it's cheaper. It's much cheaper than to send them out. Do you still get uh, physical bank account statements or only uh, electronic ones? Only electronic ones. Only That's electronic. right. right. Most of the world has gone past paper. I know a few people who still love paper, but most poor people have gone past. Well, now here is another one. So here are a couple of, here are some slang words. What means you don't have enough money when you wrote the check? Which is the slang word for not having enough money for the check you wrote? There's only one option, yes? Only one option, only one option. Okay. Do you have any, do you have any uh, questions while we're waiting for people to answer? Our, yes, actually, we did have uh, one. Our, uh, actually, it was about mostly overdraft because in Russia, because of our uh, different banking system, we use usually overdrafts for, our, for companies. And uh, if, for our uh, debit cards, we do not have overdraft attached. 
So it's very rare. So only the, your priority business. So if you don't have enough money in your account, you, uh, the the payment will just bounce. It will just kind of right. won't go away. So it won't go through. So that's why um, it won't go through. Right. Yes, if I may say so. And that's why uh, some we have we do have some questions about this overdraft because this is some new concept for a lot of people. Right. Well, you know, you, what you've said is actually very important because today with debit cards, the same thing. There are still people, for example, I have overdraft on my debit card. So in theory, I could take out a little bit more money than I actually have with this overdraft protection, but it's not much. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would have to pay them back and they would charge me a fee. But you're right. Normally with debit cards, the good thing about a debit card is if you don't have the money, it doesn't go through. Okay. So let's see whether most people got it. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, oh, excellent. I tricked you all. When I talked about the pink letter that my mother got. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That was the letter you got, but the actual slang expression is to bounce a check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To bounce a check. So in other words, and we used to even call them rubber checks because it bounced. Okay. So I used the correct word, but I voted for pink slip. <laughs> <laughs> no, pink slip, if you remember from several weeks ago, a pink slip means you've been fired. Yes, terminated. Well, termination, yes. yes so. Termination, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I was just having fun, and uh, I was very mean to all of you. But no, so to bounce a check means to not have enough money for the check you wrote. Now, why is that important? The bank should be happy. They make money. Every time you bounce a check you they charge you money well believe it or not it's actually a crime if you do it intentionally this is the technical term for bouncing a check nsf non-sufficient funds that sounds very pleasant oh he doesn't he has nfs for that amount of money but the slang is bounce a check okay now here's a difference Writing bad checks is not the same as bouncing a check. Writing bad checks means you knew you did not have the money and you were trying to defraud people. You would go to the store and you knew you didn't have any money in your bank account and you still wrote a check and you hoped they would never find you again. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's called writing a bad check. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, Hiding a check is something we can't do anymore. Um, we used to be able to, I don't know if you could ever do this in Russia then, you would have two or three accounts in different banks and you would write yourself checks. And before electronics, it would often take four or five days for a check to clear because it physically had to go to the mm -hmm. clearinghouse. So you would write a check for $1,000 to bank A from bank B, but you didn't have $1,000 in bank B. And you would then write a check from bank C to bank B for $1,000. And guess, yes, indeed, the moment you had the $1,000 in bank A, you would write a check to bank C. And this was illegal, of course, but many people did it when we had physical checks. You can't do that today, unfortunately, for some people, but fortunately for banks. And overdraft, we already talked about. Well, this question is useless then. Yes, it's useless for us. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I, I, this was really funny because I was like, I wonder if Russians are still using check. The answer is no, because they. <laughs> What's a check? Never. <laughs> you never used checks, really. No. no. Well, we used that like letter so... of credit. So, and we do have some, but uh, it's a different yeah. uh, um, negotiable oh. instrument <laughs> and so on. So. 
oh, look, look what people wrote. What's a check? <laughs> <laughs> so a check, a check is actually one of the earliest forms of, 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 of safe currency. By having this checkbook instead of carrying cash, nobody could steal it. Uh, I have never heard of anybody who was held up by a by a criminal and forced to write a check. That's never happened. But I have heard of criminals who have taken people to an ATM and made them take money out of a bank. So the checkbook was very safe against criminals. As long as you didn't lose the checkbook, then you were in trouble. Uh, that actually happened to me once. Someone stole the checkbook from my house. This was in, oh, this was in 1979. They stole the checkbook from my house and they went around the city where I was living wow. and wrote bad checks everywhere mm. in my name. <laughs> How much money did you lose? So Nothing. Oh, you nothing. were able to kind of, you weren't the, the yes. you notified the I wasn't the responsible. Mm -hmm. No, because it was the people who accepted the check without identification. Aha. Mm -hmm. They didn't check my identification. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were like, oh, yeah, sure, fine, here, take this, you know. Because they were for small amounts, but lots and lots of them. So I didn't lose a penny, but it was very, very dangerous. All right. Well, if you do write bad checks and people still do write checks in the United States, this dollar bill, this $500 bill is very important. I have never seen a $500 bill. Never, 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 never. Nope, never. But it does I've exist. It. But it used to exist. Mm -hmm. I don't think it really exists anymore. We have $100 bills. Those are very common and they're very popular around the world, as you might know. Uh, there's the new $100 bills because they're hard to uh, counterfeit, but uh, the $500 bill. On the other hand, I have seen 500 euros many times. And again, that was because they didn't use checks as much. So why is $500 the magic number? Well, if you intentionally wrote a bad check, in other words, a bad check, you knew it was bad, and it was under $500, it was a misdemeanor. Do you remember what misdemeanor means? Small crime, mm -hmm. small crime, okay? But if you wrote a check for over $500, then obviously what's gonna come next? It was a- Felony. That's no? right, exactly. Mm -hmm. It was a major crime. And you could spend over a year in jail for writing a bad check for $506, okay? So that's- that's a little thing. So this used to be a very, very important thing. People would say, uh-oh, uh-oh, careful, he's got bad checks. And in grocery stores in the United States, there would often be a wall of shame where you would have a bunch of checks hanging that had come back to the grocery store that were bad. And the grocery store couldn't collect on them because they hadn't quite followed the rules. Mm -hmm. And so they never got their money. So you would see all the time it says, do not accept checks from, and then it would have a whole list of names. But again, that's gone, that's gone, okay. Well, plastic, oh, we love credit cards. This is the world's most, not expensive credit card, Apparently, that's a credit card in Dubai, where I have heard, but I have never seen it, that you basically have to have $10 million before you can get the credit card. This is called the Centurion American Express. And this means you have to spend usually about $10,000 a month before you can even be invited to get this credit card. You can't apply for it. You have to be invited. I don't have one. <laughs> and can I have a question? Sure. So plastic, yes. is it related only to credit cards or to all kinds of cards? Uh, when we say I'm going to play, I'm going to pay with plastic, it means credit cards or debit cards. Uh -huh, both. But usually only credit cards. Because when we say I'm going to play with, I'm going to pay with plastic, it sort of indicates that you're going to pay for it and not think about how much it costs. 
That's interesting. Yes. But if you pay with a debit card, of uh -huh. course, you still have to think about how much it costs. Uh -huh. And that's the difference. What's the difference between a debit card and a credit card? You've already mentioned that. Okay. And in Russia, you have both debit and credit cards, right? Yes. And that is interesting that in Russia, we used to have for many years only like debit cards because credits, oh. uh, because of the very high inflation, uh, they were not that yes, popular. Yes. And that's why we in Russia uh, call debit cards kreditka. So we call them so. And for a lot of people, they didn't even realize that there was a difference uh, between a debit card and credit card. And only about like over, I think, less than 10 years ago, um, the credit cards really started to spread. And now it's like a, a wave of them. But before, people just kind of borrowed money from each other. Now, I think no one borrows. You just go and get a credit card, take just out. Go and get a credit card. Right? Yes, but before, uh, before it was very different. So. Did you have the old, uh, the, the Chinese had a very wonderful system, even in the United States among Chinese Americans, where they would pool, everybody would put money together. And this month, uh, uh, Mary Lou could borrow the money, then she would pay it back. Then Cindy could borrow the money, she would pay it back. I think, and it was very private. Yeah, I think uh, we need to ask our participants, but if I'm mistaken, we did have something yeah. like this during the Soviet times. It was called Kassel Zimopomish or something like this, when you really yes. poured some money and someone could get some money if they were like in some very bad situation. Exactly. So, but it, it was right. at some enterprises. So people were encouraged exactly. to help each other. But now, it was private and it was one person helping another. Yes, so. sort of like this. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, in the United States, there are there is a great deal of there great, there's a great deal of controversy and a great deal of advice on when to use a debit card and when to use a credit card. So for example, if you use a credit card, you actually have more legal protection than if you use a debit card. And so if I'm making any kind of, any kind of a, any kind of a, um, purchase online, I never use a debit card online. Never. Really? I only use credit cards. Okay. Except with my local grocery store. Because <laughs> I know them. But uh, the other thing, of course, is if the debit card is misused, they can take all of your money and it can be very difficult to get back. This happened to a colleague of mine. He used a debit card in London. And by the time he got back to Saudi Arabia, the people in London had wiped out his bank account in Saudi Arabia. Oh and it took him years to get the money back. Oh my goodness, so, Lord. Yeah, it can be rough, it can be rough, right? Okay, so it depends. Credit card usually has more legal protections, which is odd, you wouldn't think that. And a debit card does. Of course, the, they have different things. Uh, one of the things about a credit card is under American law, if you pay off the balance every month, so let's say you charged $1,000 this month, and before that is due, if you pay it, there is no interest. Yeah, we, no call interest. It, yeah we call it grace period, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where I was going, the grace period. And uh, that can be very useful to use, useful. The other thing about credit cards is many Americans like me get points. Do you have the point system in Russia? Too? Yes. So, so we have yes. cashback system and in some ah, banks. Yes, so it depends mm -hmm. upon the bank. Some really create right. some games and points for people. So and it's it's really wonderful. So it's wonderful. I buy I can buy yeah, I can buy plane tickets on Delta with the points I get from my American Express card, which is, of course, is probably bad economics, but I'm not good with money anyway. It's sort of ironic I'm, I'm working here in this finance with you because I'm personally very bad with money, but I enjoy talking about it for sure. Yes. Don't we all? <laughs> Don't we all? ATM. Who knows what ATM stands for? 
but we will wait for our participants to write. That's right. That's so, right. Give them some time. Give them some time. So who knows how this abbreviation kind of, um, right. what does it stand for? Of course, for. in much of the world, this is a bankomat or a bank machine or a automatic. Us, well, we have a uh, so we have two options: uh, automated teller machine or automatic transaction machine. One from Yulia, one from Maria. Wow, those are both excellent, but only one is right. <laughs> they both make perfect sense. The, it's actually automated teller machine. Okay, because it counts the money for you. It counts the money. So an automated teller machine, just like that. And again, remember, teller is an old word to count. So it counts the money for you. Now, of course, you, everybody knows that in addition to having the card, either the debit card or your credit card or just a bank card, you need a PIN. Now. Do you know what PIN stands for? Let's yeah. give them a moment. Mm -hmm. So everyone, so we have very uh, active participants. So what does it mean, PIN number? We have got Yulia, Alex, uh, Marusia, Maria. So, and we have an uh, answer from Yulia, personal identification number. Exactly, personal identification number. But that does not stop us. That does not stop us from saying PIN, pin number, number. Mm -hmm. right? It's really hard in English to say, what's your PIN? You really want to say, what's your PIN number, which actually then means, what's your personal identification number number? But what, what do you call the PIN in Russian? Well, it's PIN. Is it the same? It's the pin? same, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and this is so wonderful. <laughs> so we can That's understand great. all of it. That, that makes it easy, exactly. Well, when you're using the ATM, and again, we're talking about personal banking today, so this is where we're talking it. You know, when you use an ATM, you have to be very careful, of course. And you always try to use an ATM um, that is not dangerous. So, uh, I remember once I was in Moscow and I was working with this silly American woman who was not very bright and she went through a park in Moscow and there was just a, there was a ATM machine just standing in the middle of a park by itself. And she used this ATM machine. Oh, how convenient. I won't have to go da 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 da. Of course, by the time she got back to the hotel, <laughs> there was... she was so angry. And I was like, what did you expect? Would you use an ATM machine in a park in the United States? Well, of course not. <laughs> I had once right. a client who arrived to Russia from United yes. States and he decided to withdraw some money right at the airport but it was a long time ago like 15 years oh, yeah. ago and uh -huh. for some reason so and his uh, card was swallowed by oh, yes. by an ATM and then and he had to travel there was a family and they had to travel for two weeks in Russia so and I remember that we were um, I was in charge of a group uh, of these travelers and I remember that I personally, at the first initial meeting, I had to ask through the microphone that we had the situation, if someone can write a check, <laughs> so, and they could go, it's a, uh, or they could, uh, oh no, so they could, uh, they could um, uh, loan, uh, lend them the money, and they would right. write a check in return, so upon return to United States, they would cash it. That was a very long, uh, difficult oh, procedure. Oh my God, what a horrible situation. It was oh, that's a horrible, horrible situation. Poor people, I felt very sorry for them. And for some reason, uh, if I'm mistaken, they even put two cards into the ATM because usually people have two cards. So they yes, put yes, yes. both of them over there. No, so they, no, I'm no. kidding. Mm -hmm. so, oh, and yeah. that's and that's actually one of the ways in which ATMs can be can be a, a crime scene by entrapment, where they literally just steal your card, yeah. steal your card. Um, this, when I was working in China with young Americans, um, I thought it was very funny. We had, a, we had a card that was eaten in an ATM that was in the Great Wall of China. 
there was literally an ATM in the Great Wall of China. <laughs> so she ate the card and we were able to go to a bank nearby. And in my horrible Chinese, I was able to get her card back. But it was really sad. It wasn't entrapment. It was just there was a problem with it. The other type is called skimming. Skimming is when you get your card back, you get your card back, but you're not aware that somehow they have stolen your information. They might have some magic, magic numbers or they might have a camera somewhere and they skim your numbers and then they create a card. This happened a few years ago again to me. I, it was very scary. I answered the phone one day. This is probably 15 years ago. I answered the phone and they said, uh, this is the United States Treasury Department. <laughs> no, 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 not Treasury. Secret Service. This is the United States Secret Service calling for Charles Hall. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to jail. <laughs> and it <laughs> not one of the phone calls you ever wanted to yes. get. It turned out that my credit card had been skimmed in Florida and the secret service, which is in charge of counterfeit money, which this counts as too, because it's counterfeit, had, had raided a house where they had credit card machines and they were making credit cards with the information they had skimmed from all these people. And my credit card was one of them. So they just called to say, did you use your credit card in Florida? Da, 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 da. And I was like, yes, yes, that's all. Whew. So skimming, they just took my number somehow and I have no idea how. And the other is just good old fashioned. They usually, they cause you, a, they cause a problem. They look over you as you put your pin number in, they see it and whoosh, then they pickpocket your card and they use it. So these are three very common terms for using ATMs to steal money. Well, what's really nice today, and I think you mentioned this, is that a lot of people today are using payment apps. You mentioned that people are, you can pay, you can pay for a cup of coffee back and forth, right? Yeah. And you just sort of send them the money. Um, I don't use, I don't use any of these here i use them in the united states but not not here in saudi arabia okay although i see my students using them all the time they walk up to dunkin donuts in our school they just flash their phone and away it goes what's the most what would you say is the most common app in russia for this kind of payment well uh, to tell you the truth none <laughs> Just because we have a little bit different system, we used to have uh, Google Pay, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, we used to have uh, Google Pay, and uh, our, which was for um, just for your phone. You would just right. um, apply it and pay with your phone. Right now, because of the sanctions, we cannot use it. We cannot use uh, also iPhone Pay or something like this. So that we uh. had, and uh, we usually do a different way now. Usually banks. Uh, we have like interbank system and uh, really? you, you just go into the application of your bank and uh, you just send money through or like for the phone of a person and then you insert this the phone of your person you can just pick it from your contacts and they will choose like which bank you can send to them and no commission in most of the situations really? so yes and it's instant yeah it's instant. Oh, that's yes. great. So, but we have actually, uh, yes, and uh, uh, we do. I have some comments that, of course, Apple Pay people used. Yes, it's Apple Pay, not iPhone Pay. So uh, now we have a local Russian Mir Pay, which is like inside Mir. Russia, Mir. And uh -huh. uh, of course, we used to use, and now I think people still use Western Union and PayPal when you want to send some money abroad. So, but that's they were right. like uh, right. um, outside of the country. So, right. So we yes. have a little bit different. So, and we have our exactly. local, some system of fast transactions, SPS, yeah. or SBS, whatever. 
something like Next, that. Next, in two weeks, we'll talk about transferring money internationally and the new ways to do that, because that could cost a fortune. Western Union could cost so much money to transfer money, depending on how fast you want it. And in the United States, Western Union was the money that poor people use um, and they charge outrageous fees. So uh, when my nephew was young and silly, he would call us up and say, I'm in the middle of the desert in Arizona and my car broke down and I don't have any money. So we would have to send him money through Western Union that he would pick up at a local grocery store and it would cost us so much money. Today, he uses Cash App, number five, very effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay, so payment apps, they've changed the way, and this is really good for, uh, this is good for poorer people who can't afford real banks, okay? Because there's certain ways to not have a bank and do it. Well, we're almost, we're almost finished yeah. out of time. Good, again, oh my gosh, it always goes so fast. One of the bizarre things that you can still do at a bank is a safe deposit bank box. This is inside, and oddly enough, very few banks are now building these. Most banks don't want safe deposit box anymore. They're trying to do everything online, and a safe deposit box is obviously physical. And as you can see from the picture, there are two keyholes in each one. And it took two keys to open a safe deposit box, one from the bank and one from you. And there are all sorts of beautiful stories about, about not good stories, of course, about when people die and, and their relatives open up the safe deposit box expecting to find millions of dollars in jewels and they find plastic jewels or something or vice versa. Okay. Um, so now here's the problem. Bank of America wants to remind you that you're not insured mm -hmm. with the Bank of America. So if you put, let's say in box number 38, you put $200,000 in cash, it's not insured. If so the bank were to burn down, mm -hmm. you would lose all your money. Which is strange actually, because you kind of entrust your money to them. You pay money to them for yes. every, like every month there is a certain fee. Yes, yes. It's interesting. I think I think Bank of America is one where the liability, don't quote me on this, I think Bank of America's liability is 10 times the annual rent. So if it costs $200 a year to rent the box, the most they ever have to pay you is $2,000. And of course, you could have much more than that in the bank. Now, it does depend. For example, if the bank has been the bank has been uh, somehow um, negligent, mm -hmm. like if the bank is being torn down and they don't get hold of you and stuff disappears, then they can be responsible. And that brings us to our next question: What do you think? You put a valuable next a necklace in a safe deposit box, and it disappears when the bank is shut down. Can you hold the bank responsible for the loss? I know what I want the answer to be. <laughs> do you think bank closes you... like it likes like uh, bankrupt or uh, or it's... Yes, let's say, yeah, maybe it's sold to another bank mm -hmm. or they just tear, they physically just tear that bank down, which happens all the time in America. You know, we tear things down all the time. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and while we're just waiting for the voting, so I can uh -huh. see that there are some comments about a lot of payment um, application that there is Samsung Pay in, in Russia, and there is this system of, yes, Mir Pay and the system of quick payment that we have inside. So it's really kind of woke up everyone. <laughs> so, because we do have these uh, applications. So, and oh. they're lovely, 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 lovely. Excellent. Well, thank you everybody for that. And Number three is the correct answer, of course. It depends. But that's the answer for almost everything in law, isn't it? 
<laughs> Nobody chose number four. That's the one where the bank would say, oh, I don't know, I never saw a necklace. And that's the important thing about a safe deposit box is the bank officially does not know what's inside oh, it. And of course, these are really important in spy movies. Every spy movie has a safe deposit box, okay? Well, we're almost out of time, as again, we haven't finished, and we didn't get to one of the most important things, but I'll add this for in two weeks. But the last thing I wanna talk about tonight is something called credit history and credit score. This is so important in the United States. When we had our first session, we looked at in some places, some jobs want to know your credit score. Well, the credit score called FICO score basically is a accounting of how likely it is that you will pay back money you borrow. And the higher your score, not only is it more likely you will get a loan, but you will actually get lower interest rates, which makes no sense in the world. So in other words, if you look at this thing, if you have in the green over 800, you might get a car loan and the interest rate might be 2%, but if you're in the poor 300, you might get a car rate of 12%. So it's sort of almost backwards. The people who can least afford to pay the money back are the ones who are charged the most. So we'll talk more about credit scores, credit histories next time, and about mortgages, of course. Let's finish, of course, today with, we're gonna talk next week about how to start a bank too. Let's finish with our favorite final question, which is, of course, let's see if this works. Nope, this one didn't work either. What so the cloud word doesn't do work. Most? Yeah. The cloud doesn't work. Yeah. Apparently the cloud, and I was having a hard time even putting the cloud in the thing. And apparently something's wrong with it. It doesn't work. Yeah. So just ask your, ask the people, what word do they remember most from tonight? From tonight, oh, I need to think. So for some reason, I remember only banka. Banka is a table. <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak Italian, Sofia? No, and actually it was a totally new thing to me, absolutely, because now it's like totally opens up a lot of um, words, you know, like, like break the bank, bank and yes, and bankrupt. Yeah. Bankrupt is just like, oh my goodness. So, aha. Uh -huh. It means so, literally broken, broken table. The yes, and so um, <laughs> I will read out the words. So pink okay. slip, bounce, bounce, overdrawn, bank, overdrive <laughs> that's something amazing identification I like yes bancarota pink slip to bounce a check so the word bounce thank i think you. a lot of people like thank you very much everyone thank you thank Yulia, you Taksiana, so much uh, tatiana maria so victor and alex because it's wonderful to see the comments so and we well, will same. love to see the information that we didn't uh do uh today if we can just kind of squeeze it into so the next so because it's very interesting and right because that's where we're talking about loans and especially mortgages which for personal banking that's often the most important financial situation that an individual has yeah. is the mortgage for the house yeah. so we'll talk about mortgages and international banking in two weeks but sophia thank you once again and thank you ramon for yes. you for helping so much tonight and i and I really appreciate all the input from the participants. And of course, you'll you'll get this as a power as a uh, PDF and they'll be able to read it. And you will have you'll put this yes. up as a video. Yes. And um, we will send tomorrow. Uh, we usually send next day the link uh, for the video and then we'll uh, send the presentation. We also upload the presentation. And I would like to also to remind everyone and I will send it uh, because I didn't realize it today. So that we actually create um, the bank of words, the vocabulary from yes. the from the presentation, which is free uh, for everyone to um, access then Quizlet. And uh, you can just, and we put the links on our website, but I realize that a lot of people do not kind of understand that we actually have them. And I will be also sending out the links to this vocabulary so you can reflect back to the vocabulary from previous classes and also after um, the class that we've had with you. So at the end of the course, you will have six videos with Charles, 
six presentations and six uh, decks of cards which range from 20 to actually 50 words so which are translated wow. into russian yes the first one was really rich in words and i uh, and i can already see that this presentation <laughs> will be also um uh, will will be a source of a lot of vocabulary but this is excellent thank you so much charles thank you. Thank no, you. thank you, Sophia. And thank you all. Thank you all for participating. I appreciate it very much. And of course, Sophia used a different word, a oh, bank of words, another meaning of bank. By the to way, to store yes. something. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank yes. you very much. Well, good night, Sophia, and I'll see you again in two weeks. Yes, good night. Bye bye. Thank bye you. bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.